today we're going to combine a Beta FPV Pavo 20 and a Walksnail Avatar HD Pro kit to make a Walksnail Pavo 20. The first thing to do is fit the Avatar VTX into the Pavo 20 cage. The main problem here is that the cage was designed for the DJI O3 and the Walksnail VTX is just a slight bit bigger. The DJI unit is 32.5 millimeters by 30.5 millimeters where the Avatar VTX is actually 33.7 millimeters by 33.7 millimeters by my measurement. We're going to use the Cadex Vista adapter that comes with the kit as that happens to hit the Avatar VTX perfectly. And for right now, we're gonna have that on there hold everything still while we measure. The first thing we need to do is remove the ears that are meant for the other three air unit as they're just not gonna fit the Avatar. So we'll just snip those right off. And while we can see that's better, it's still causing the cage to flex quite a bit, and we're not gonna be able to put that X brace on on the bottom, pull it tight. So we'll dry fit the unit in here and see where we need to take away some material. Now I tried a few different ways and tools to shave material off of this cage. Found the best bet was a good old fashioned Dremel. This leaves the cage a little bit hairy, and I found the best way to clean this up is to just scrape that off with a sharp X-Acto knife. Another small alteration we need to make is this crossbar. Uh, it kind of hits where the MP cables come through and instead of cramping that cable and wrapping it around, uh, especially since we're gonna use that crossbar, let's just go ahead and cut that out and get it out of the way. That carbon fiber crossbar we're gonna use is gonna be more than enough to keep this all together. Now we will dry fit the VTX into the cage and make sure everything lines up. Looks like everything lines up well. The next major concern is wiring UART and power from the flight control board to the Avatar VTX. And we would like to do this with as little alteration as possible and without soldering. The way we'll accomplish this is we'll take the existing air unit cable and we will modify it to work for the Walksnail by replacing the end with the Walksnail end and using the wires that are necessary. To do this, we'll have to look at the wiring diagrams for the Beta FPV flight control board and the Walksnail VTX. On the flight control diagram, we find that the connector is wired power, ground, TX4, RX4. The last two lines are for S bus and we won't be using those. So the wires we'll be working with will be red, black, yellow, and white. We'll want to wire those four leads into our walk snail cable in the proper order. We'll look that up on the factory diagram as well. And what we find is the walk snail cable is power, ground, receive, transmit. So power, ground, RX, TX. And remembering that we want to wire the UART RX to TX and TX to RX, this works really well with these two connections because we have TX, RX on one and RX, TX on the other flop them around and so we have the cables going in the same order on both sides. So we end up with these wires wanting to go straight across one to one from the FC connector to the walk snail connector. Let's go ahead and remove the cable from the flight control to make it a little bit easier to work with. Now the plan is to remove one connector completely because we're gonna replace that with the walk snail connector. 
And then on the other side, we're going to remove the two wires that are for SBUS because we just won't be using them in this configuration. Finally, we'll reinsert the loose ends into the walk snail connector in the correct order, giving us a factory looking cable. Let's remove this end first. If you've not worked with these connectors before, they are a little fiddly and can get frustrating. What we have is a little lever here that wedges into the metal connectors and holds them in place. To change these cables, what we need to do is lift up these levers and pop the cables out. Uh, it takes a little bit of patience. Uh, I use a sharp X-Acto mainly because it gets under there and works. Uh, just be careful not to stab yourself. As you see, we lift that lever up, get that cable out, and we can just do that right down the line. We'll go down and pull them all out. Now that we have that connector off, we're going to repeat this process with the two wires we want to take off of the other connector and remove just those two S-Bus wires, the two uh, on the end there, the black and purple. And the procedure's just like the others. And now we have a cable with the four leads that we need. And what we need to do is reinsert these loose ends into the walk snail connector in the correct order. This connector works just like the connector we were working with so far, except that it's got four slots. Instead of taking all the wires all out at once, we're going to work one by one to help us make sure we put things back in the right order. So first, we'll pull out the power lead so that we can insert the power lead from the new cable setup. So once we have the old power lead out, We'll get our new assembly. We'll get the power lead from that assembly, which will be the red one, of course. And we'll just insert that where we just removed that wire. Just like before, the wires have a little nub that will catch on the lever as we slide it in the housing. So we'll slide that up until we get a little click and we'll have the first connection. Now we're going to repeat that process with the ground wire, removing the ground. And then inserting the ground from our new harness wire. We'll try to keep these untangled because we don't have a lot of wire to work with and we don't want to shorten up this cable. These connectors can sometimes be a little frustrating. Just be patient and work with it. Uh, use your knife to push it in. Just be careful you don't stab yourself or cut the wire. You, you definitely don't want to cut these wires and you don't want to, obviously don't want to stab yourself. Sometimes you can ease the connector in by sliding from the top with your knife. Again, just be gentle. Don't break anything. Don't cut yourself. Give a gentle tug to test them. Sometimes you'll miss and you'll just have to try again. Sometimes the little pin on top gets mushed down. Uh, you can lift that up a little bit with your knife just to make sure it's going to get a good catch. And that may resolve the problem if you've got one that doesn't want to stay. There, I think we finally got it. Now we can move on to the transmit and receive lines. With these last two, I'm going to go ahead and pull these last two cords out as we aren't using the color coding uh, and we know we just want them in the next two slots, same as they are in the other connector. So let's get these wires out. Another caution with these housings, uh, the levers can break off pretty easy, so just, just be gentle with them and be careful.
Now remember with these last two wires, we're going to just start with them in the order that they are on the source plug and put them in the same order on our VTX destination plug. And this is simply because the FC is wired power ground transmit receive and then the walk snail side is power ground receive transmit. So we'll go ahead and insert the third lead. And finally, the fourth and final lead. And there you have it, a custom walk snail lead for the Pavo 20. Let's put this lead back in the Pavo and we're ready to go. And there you go. We now have a walk snail Pavo 20. Now to put it all together, we'll take the walk snail unit and we'll mount it onto the cross brace that's provided for Caddx Vista. And I found to do this, uh, the best choice was to use uh, four of the little black washers that come with the avatar unit and four of the smallest screws or shortest screws that come with it. Uh, that fits perfectly and holds it uh, nice and snug. Once that's all assembled, we'll mount that assembly into the cage. and we'll mount the camera to the cage as well. The next step is to install the rubber grommets on the main carbon fiber plate. Uh, I won't bore you with the details of how to do this. There's plenty of tutorials out there to put rubber grommets into flight controls. This is pretty much the same process. Once the grommets are all in, we'll feed in the four screws that will hold on the canopy. Now I'm gonna wait till the end to put the antenna on because I wanna see how it fits once everything's together. And, and we have plenty of room to work here. So there's really no reason to get it on now before we put it together. Uh, it'll just be easier to wait and we can see how everything fits together and we have plenty of room to get in there and do what we need to do. So the next step is to go ahead and mount the canopy uh, VTX cage onto the main carbon fiber plate using the screws that we fed through earlier.
almost there, looking pretty good. Quick check to make sure that that VTX cable is going to fit. The size looks good. Look at that. Looks, looks like it was made that way. Next, we'll install the antenna. For right now, I'm going to go ahead and use the stock Waxnell antenna. Uh, the idea is I'm going to go through that slot in the top. We'll coil the lead around once or twice and get it into the VTX. So we'll just feed it through. It holds nice and tight in there. It's actually a pretty good fit. And we'll just take the lead. We'll give it a, a twist or two. And get it up on that UFL connector. After we've worked around and dry fitted a few times and found where we want it, we'll go ahead and loosen up the cover and uh, wire this thing through. Be careful not to lose those nuts off the bottom of the VTX. Uh, I've done it more than once. It's not a fun, fun process trying to fix that. Just take your time and be careful. Get that finished up, and there you have it. A Waxnell Pavo 20. It really almost looks like it was made this way. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it helps you on your journey to make a Waxnell Pavo 20. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification button to be notified when I get new content out. And please check out some of my other videos. I'd be glad to have you around.